Today's brief has been created with open source information readily available on the internet as well as books. However, take it with a pinch of salt because some aspects have been kept secret due to said country's official secrets act. And sometimes Wikipedia is probably the best place to find the information. So sit back, relax, and let's get into today's briefing. This video has been requested to cover naval terminology because people in the Roger Nigel speak a completely different language. Ironic, but this slightly disjointed Matlow language known as Jackspeak is a very interesting language that can be found all over the world in sayings that will most definitely surprise you. So this video might be a start of a mini series depending on how many words I can actually define. But today we will cover some easy ones and ones that will define parts of a ship. So let's get defining. The hull of the ship is the main section of the ship. This keeps the ship buoyant. This section would include decks, ladder chains, galleys, mess decks, heads, bathrooms, flats, machinery spaces, magazines, and as well as stores and other stuff. The bow of the ship is the most streamlined part of the vessel. It takes up the forward third of the ship and is usually the most streamlined due to its ability to cut through the water. By proportion to the rest of the vessel, this section has less volume than all the other sections. The stem of the ship is a continuation of the keel that raises above the waterline to form the overall shape of the ship's bow. This section is used to bond the port and starboard sides together to create a single hull that is watertight. The midship section of the ship is the central third. Now this section is where you find mainly your machinery as well as galleys and some magazines and occasionally a mess deck or two. This is usually the largest section of the ship in terms of volume. The stern of the ship is the aft third of the vessel. This is usually more streamlined than a midships but less than the bow. This section usually has the rudders, propellers as well as the quarter deck. The forecastle, or as it's better known as the forecastle, is, well, on olden day ships, would have been a forward part of the ship that was raised with palisades around the top. Over the years, this would be cut down until modern day, where nowadays we have two types. We have the enclosed and the open. The clue is in the name, but if you're, if you don't understand, an enclosed forecastle is where like on an aircraft carrier, the forecastle, which has usually the anchor chains, winches, bollards, capstans, would all be inside a compartment, the forecastle, but would have the ship's side curving up, so it encloses it so it's not open to the elements as much. A open forecastle is where there is nothing to actually hide you from the elements, so stuff like olden day ships pre-building stealth ships so pre-type 45s stuff like the type 23 has an open forecastle and that would also include having like i said anchor chains winches bollards captains but then this would also have a jack staff the quarter deck is very similar to the forecastle but this time it's the aft end of the ship it too used to be raised with large palisades around it However, this would be the place where the ship's commanding officer would command the ship from. Usually you'd also find the helm there because it was close to the tiller as well as the rudder. Over time, like the forecastle, the palisades would be cut down and in most cases, but not all, it would become, on warships of the steam and steel era, the aft part of the main deck, or would be the aft section of the lowest open aired deck. Today, however, you tend to find enclosed and semi-enclosed quarter decks, with the odd rare occasion of a open quarter deck. Like the forecastle, you would normally find winches, bollards, as well as captains, and in some cases you might find an anchor chain or two. The bridge would come about in the age of steam and steel. Paddle wheel powered vessels would come about and the quarter deck would no longer be an ideal spot to command your vessel from due to your view becoming obscured by masts, funnels and other such upper works. And so an idea was developed that would pretty much make the bridge, but between the two paddle housings with support in the middle to command the vessel. 
That way you could see the extremities of the beam for docking purposes. But as we know, the paddle wheel steamer didn't really last that long, did it? But the idea of a raised platform with wings to command a ship from stuck. And so we have the bridge that we know today. The superstructure is a built up section of the ship above the hull. Stuff like bridge, funnels, hangars, and other such stuff like that. On an aircraft carrier, you tend to find that the superstructure is actually called an island, or in the case of some new aircraft carriers, these are islands. The deck is the ship's floor. This is usually supported by beams and is made out of some form of metal. The bulkheads, these are walls inside your ship. These keep the ship rigid as well as subdivided into compartments as well as sections. The deck head is at the roof of your compartment and usually has a deck above it. A flat is pretty much a walkway or passageway on board the ship inside the vessel. The heads are pretty much toilets. Bathrooms, they are self-explanatory. However, there are no baths on a warship except for the captain's cabin. They are just showers, unfortunately. The ship's waist. This is a continuous deck that circuits the superstructure on the weather, main or upper decks. As you can see, this is in between the red section and blue section. Right, well that's all I can think of for now. However, I will leave you a fun little one before I do leave. So. BOST. BOST is an acronym for Basic Operational Sea Training. This is what a ship has to go through before it becomes an operational unit. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching, hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like the video before you leave, leave a comment and uh, give a suggestion of what you think I should do next, as well as if you have a question you want me to answer, please put it in the comment section on the pinned post. Apart from that, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I recommend doing so because I have some very interesting content coming out very soon. If you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon page, but that's entirely up to you. If you do so, there is some interesting perks to actually being a Patreon to the page. Apart from that, all you need to do is say thank you very much, have a nice day, and uh, here's a sneak peek at uh, next week's video.